God's people, you know, talking to one another, encouraging each other, um, and so much more as you see the days approaching. We need to encourage one another, exhort one another, and uh, bless each other uh, with our words. Uh, if you would, please turn in your holy King James Bible to Revelation chapter 18, and we're going to read verse 4 and verse 5 for our text this morning. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4 and 5 in your Holy King James Bible. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Let me read that again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Let's pray this morning. Merciful Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We praise you and thank you for the day. We have come together to worship thee. We have lifted our voices together to sing spiritual hymns and magnify thy name. We do this because we acknowledge our weakness and thy great strength. We come together now in prayer for our people that you would be merciful and forgiving. Though we deserve judgment, we pray for grace. Many are blinded by sin, and we ask that you would remove the scales of darkness that they might see the glorious light of the gospel and be saved. We know that only a God-sent awakening and revival can push back the coming judgment. We ask that you would send a spiritual reign of truth to end the famine of lies. In Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake we pray, amen. The title of the message this morning is Democrat or Christian? Pick one. Democrat or Christian? Pick one. And you think, whoa, that's a pretty, pretty political title. It is a pretty political title. It really is because, you know, uh, we are coming uh, up to uh, November, which is coming very soon. Uh, right now is September. We've got October and then November. And then we've got a very important election coming up for the presidency and for many people in office. And what I want you to understand is uh, Democrat or Christian, you need to pick one. You can't have both. And uh, I'm, I'm preaching this morning, first of all, if you call yourself a Democrat and a Christian, I'm not preaching against you. I'm preaching for you. What you don't need, you do not need a liver lilied tight blue jean preacher up preaching something that you want to hear. You need someone with a Bible for a backbone telling you what you need to hear. Amen? Amen. And this morning, I'm not here to tickle your ears because I'm not here to preach for you. I'm here to preach for God and be the word of God in your life saying, here's what the Bible says about politics. And if the church can't speak about politics, no one can. Amen. Because the church, again, is the pillar and the ground of truth. And I find it very uh, uh, unironic that we have a president named Trump, who is really uh, a picture of uh, pushing back judgment and giving us a space of grace to repent and get right with God before the coming judgment. Isn't it amazing that God said, go to a street that's called straight? You think for a minute that that was not preordained by God, that that street that they were told to go to is called straight? I don't think it was a bit of a coincidence that God told Paul to go to a street called straight. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we have a, a, a president named Trump which uh, Trump in the Bible is sounded to let you know the enemy is coming. And so that you can be pre-warned pre and prepared for the coming enemy. And we have a president who has given us four years pushing back the evil judgment that is coming upon America and has given us a reprieve to get right with God. And we have an option in November to either choose to vote for judgment or choose to, to vote for an option to get right with God before the judgment does fall upon America. Amen? So this morning, I ask you, if you are a Democrat or a Christian, you have to pick one. Um, you don't need someone to tell you what you want to hear. You need someone to tell you what the Bible says. Someone with a Bible for a backbone, which is what a lot of churches are missing today. You need love. You need truth. And you need to see politics not from the perspective of your pocketbook, 
But from the perspective of right versus wrong, life versus death, good versus evil, amen? The Bible says in Revelation 18, 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Is this speaking specifically about the Democratic Party? No, it is not. It is speaking specifically about Mystery Babylon. What is Mystery Babylon? What is Babylon in the Bible? Babylon is a way of thinking that is contrary to the Word of God. It is a system of thinking. It is an ideology that totally is opposed to God and the Bible. Amen? And as you look at the the, 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 the Babylon, you are looking at a, a system that promotes the new world order. It promotes globalism. It promotes everything that is anti-God in our country and the world. Amen? So when it says, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers with her, lest you receive of her plagues, he's, he's begging God's people to wake up and stop identifying with the system of Babylon and come out of her and be separate and not try to mix Good with evil, not try to mix light and dark because the Bible says you can't do it. You may try all you want, but you cannot do it. Democrat or Christian, pick one. Amen? So the Bible's not specifically talking about the Democratic Party when it speaks of Mystery Babylon, but it is talking about globalism. It is talking about the mindset of those who are against God of the Bible, those who are for, uh, th those who love child sacrifice and love big government. Globalism, let me tell you something, globalism is against God. Globalism is always against God. God was against globalism back at the Tower of Babel. And guess what? God is still against globalism today because globalism hurts people. And God loves mankind enough to send his son to die on the cross that you could be saved and come out of darkness into his light. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is true this morning. The Democratic Party is the loudest voice for globalism in our country. Uh, listen to that. The Democratic Party is the loudest voice in our country for globalism. It is, in, in a leftist article, I'll read this to you. In a leftist article, the writer of the article is making a statement that because of the global pandemic, he says, a president is never more powerful than after an imminent international crisis. In other words, he's saying because of the global pandemic called COVID-19, uh, someone is, uh, whoever is the next president is going to have a great amount of, of, of influence over not only our country, but over the whole world. And he's saying, though Joe Biden is not a good candidate, and though he's not a great candidate speaking from his own party, he's saying, listen, doesn't matter if the man is of little importance, he's coming into a time of great importance. And because of that, his importance would be heightened. He says this, he says, a president is never more powerful than after an international crisis. With the world in flux, he need not be an obviously great man to be of great consequence. If the underwhelming Democrat, talking about Joe Biden, beats President Donald Trump in November, he will have a globe and era shaping opportunity. The politics of 2021 will set the tone for future governments. Mr. Biden is, then, the last best hope of globalism. Direct quote. Mr. Biden is, then, the last best hope for globalism. You know, I, I, wish, I wish that were true. That all we have to do is, is beat him in this election to defeat globalism. But what this writer doesn't know is that the devil has been working about to bring about the new world over and globalism forever. And he's always got the next man up. What he should have said is Mr. Biden is the next and last great hope for globalism immediately. Immediately. But God, in his mercy, always gives man an escape from judgment. And escape from judgment is always repentance. When man repents of God, God repents of judgment. And America needs to wake up and say, hey, we had four years of the trumpet of warning saying God has pushed back judgment for four years. Let's wake up. Let's turn back to the God who loves us and wants to protect us and save us before it's too late. But let's definitely not go out and vote for judgment when we could vote for, for mercy for space to repent, for time to repent and get right with God. We, we need to make sure that we do not vote for globalism. If you're a Democrat and claim to be a Christian, you need to pick a side. God or the new world order. God or globalism. Pick one. 
The Bible says, Jesus said, actually, no man can serve two masters. When you have two that are diametrically opposed, you have to choose one or the other, Jesus or the devil, light or dark, good or evil. You know, a Christian by the name of Al Taylor said, one of my acquaintances has accused me of loving politics more than Christianity. He said, well, let's see. One side condones murdering the most innocent, defending the guilty, dismissing the mere fact of only two genders, disdains Bible marriage, and a host of other unbiblical precepts. You, he's saying, listen, you, can't, you cannot stand for the Democratic Party who are science deniers. They say that there's not two genders and there are two genders. And the Bible says in the beginning, God made man and woman. He only made two genders. That's it. You can't stand for a party that loves to kill babies and call yourself a Christian. And I'm not being political. I'm being truthful. And when you're truthful, many times you're called political. But there is no one on God's green earth that is willing and able to speak about politics more than the Christian. Amen? Amen. I said in Sunday school this morning, listen, all of you have a bigger platform than you think. Especially with your friends. On social media. Why does social media want to silence your voice if your voice doesn't matter? They want to silence your voice because your voice does matter. Amen? Because it does matter what you say. And let me ask you a question. Who wants to keep Christians from speaking about politics? Is it God or the devil? Who wants to allow the Democrats to megaphone their voice? Is it God or the devil? Amen. It's the devil. The devil is against God. And he's against goodness. And he's against truth. John 3.20 says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You cannot say that you love God and love the Democratic Party. Amen? You cannot, you cannot... What? You can say it, you can say it, but it's wrong. You cannot vote like, one, some, like somebody said. You can't go out and vote for abortion on Tuesday and sing, oh, how I love Jesus on Sunday. It doesn't work that way. You, you, you are called a hypocrite in the eyes of God when you say, I love the, the candidate that is killing babies, but I also love to sing, oh, how I love Jesus. That's hypocrisy. Right. And it needs to be exposed. It needs to be pulled out from under them and say, hey, listen, this is what's going on in our country. We have people who claim to be Christian, but they also claim to be Democrat. And you cannot side with a party that kills innocent life, that hates God, that hates the church, that hates you, and say that you're a Christian. One preacher said, let me illustrate this point. If you love flowers, then you hate weeds. No one loves flowers and weeds. If you have a beautiful flower bed or garden that you maintain, you fully realize that part of the maintenance involves, involves pulling out the weeds. It's a simple illustration. But likewise, if you love God, then you should hate any and every evil that opposes the God that you support. Amen? Amen? It's like these Democratic governors and these Democratic mayors who say they love the people of their city and they allow one citizen to go and murder another citizen and burn down their buildings. You don't love those people. If you love those people, you'd want them to grow like, you'd want your good citizens to grow like flowers, and you'd pull out the weeds and put them in prison. Amen? Amen? You can't say you love both. You gotta choose one, you gotta choose good, or you gotta choose evil. Amen. Amen, I like that. To say that I'm a Democrat and a Christian in this stage in history is an impossibility. Maybe in the past, I don't know, I'm only 40 years old, but in my 40 years, I can't believe that you could ever say it. But today especially, it cannot be said. Now, I, I know what I'm saying. You can say the words, I am a Democrat Christian. You can say the words. There are people today in our society, unfortunately, that say, I'm a homosexual Christian. It, it's being said. There are pastors who say, I, I'm, a, I'm a homosexual pastor. Well, you can say the words, but that doesn't make it so. I can tell you I'm a pink elephant this morning, but I'm not. I can go to the buffet line where children eat free and tell my child, but they'd be like, you're not a child, and we're not letting you in for free. Amen? Amen. We've lost the ability to think with our heart through the word of God and our minds. We've given up common sense as a society because 
of lies. And, and, and so somebody told me the other day, and it was so true, he said, the devil's only got one weapon against you, it's a lie. You think about everything the devil brings against you, he's only got one weapon, it's a lie. Everything, every sin falls under that category, it's a lie. That's why the Democrats love, and politicians in general love lying. They like to tell you what you want to hear, knowing they'll never perform what they say they're going to do. I understand you can say that you're a Christian Democrat. I'm not saying that you cannot say that. I am saying that you cannot understand what it is to be a Christian and what it is to be a Democrat and use them in similitude. Okay? They are oxymorons. You cannot put the two together. Like oil and water, they will not mix. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Democrat or Christian, pick one. Amen? Amen. And I'm not saying this in anger against anyone. But what needs to happen is when you want to hitch your wagon to a sin and bring Christ along into it, you have to understand you are not a Christian and you're hitched to sin and you are in sin. Amen? When you say, I'm a Christian homosexual, and you've hitched your, your supposedly Christian wagon up to homosexuality, and you're proud of that sin, you're basically exposing yourself as not a Christian. Listen, I used to be into sin when I, before I was born again, and I never, when I became born again and God came into my life and changed me, I never longer wanted to identify with the sin that so easily beset me. I wanted to distance myself as far as I could from it and say, I am not a sinner anymore. I'm a saint. Not because of me, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. When you get saved, you're no longer a sinner. You're a saint. And you are ashamed of the sin that you were in. Amen. Listen, some of you used to be Democrats and you got saved. You no longer want to identify with them. Some of you might have been homosexual. You get saved, you no longer want to identify with that crowd or that, that sin. Some of you may be even drunkards. And you say, God save me from alcohol. God save me from drugs. God save me from lying and cheating and stealing and adultery and murder. God save me from those things. I don't identify with them anymore. Amen. Amen? I don't want to identify with them anymore. Amen. I don't look down on the people who are doing that. I call to them and say, listen, I used to be like you. But praise God. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than whatever sin that you're in. Amen. Amen? And I don't identify with that anymore. That's my old life. And aren't you glad wherever you were, God came looking for you? Amen? Amen. God didn't just sit up there and say, oh, he's going the wrong direction and didn't do anything in your life. God said, oh, that drunkard needs some help. I'm going to go where he's at and I'm going to help him out of his sin. I'm going to bring him through the blood of Jesus Christ out of drunkenness to soberness. By the grace of God. Amen? Amen? God wants to save people. But he has to expose you before he can save you. Man, he hit me right between the eyes with the Bible and said, you are a sinner. And until you identify as a sinner, you'll never be a saint. Amen? Amen. Now, you can get mad at this message. You can get mad at the messenger. But when the messenger's giving you truth, you need to take a couple steps back and say, you're right. I cannot identify with those who hate God, with those who hate life, and with those who hate the church and call myself a Christian. Amen. I need to pick one or the other. I need to draw a line. Moses said, you know what? Here's a line. You either come over here and you can be with God or you can stay over there and be with your sin, but you can't hitch your wagon to sin and call yourself a Christian. Amen. Amen. Democrat or Christian, pick one. You want to see the Democrats in all their filth? What they really are. I mean, they've got a beautiful veil over themselves. All kinds of false names that they, they proclaim out there about all kinds of things. But if you want to pull the veil off, like in the Wizard of Oz, when they pull back the curtain and it's not the great Oz, it's just some man behind a curtain. You want to do that with the Democrats? Look at California. Because that's, with, that's them letting their hair down. That's them saying, here's what we really want to do. A Democrat-led California bill that would lower penalties for sexual relations with minors is headed to the governor's desk, Governor Newsom's desk, who is a Democrat. Now, I'm not saying they're going to vote on this. They've already voted on it and approved it. The Democrats did. I'm not saying they're thinking about doing this. I'm saying they already 
voted on this, they approved this as Democrats, and now they sent it to the governor's desk who's a Democrat just to sign it into law. A Democrat-led California bill that would lower penalties for sexual relations with minors is headed to the governor Newsom's desk, who is a Democrat. If signed into law, a 24-year-old could have sexual relations with a 15-year-old child without being required to register as a sex offender. Democrat or Christian, pick one. You can't have both. What fellowship has light with darkness? What fellowship has God with Belial, which is the devil? None. None. Amen? Democrat or Christian, pick one. The Ten Commandments are the law of love according to Jesus. It is why we have the golden rule. They came to Jesus, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus is speaking, saying everything hangs on these two things. All of love hangs on these two things. Love God and love people. If you love God and you love people, you would never even try to bring a law like this into existence. Amen? Amen? If you ever had a daughter or a son, you would never want to bring a law like this into existence. If you had half a reason of morality in you, but only morality comes from God. True morality, truth comes from God. God says, listen, the golden rule is put God first and put others first and put yourself last. But because we live in a selfish, godless society full of self-pleasure, people are doing what they feel good and everyone does what's right in his own eyes. And you look at California and the Democrat-led state called California and you find mass corruption. Amen. Amen. Mass corruption. You look at New York, what do you find? Mass corruption. Because they're a godless society who does not want to retain God in their imagination or in their mind. God says, love God, love people. You cannot love God and not love people. And you cannot love people without loving God. Amen? Amen. Who hates God? The devil hates God. Who hates people? The devil hates people. And I want to tell you something this morning. I'm going to expose, if you're a Democrat who calls yourself a Christian, I'm going to expose you this morning. Because the top three things the devil hates, the Democrats love. I mean, the top three things the devil hates, the, devil, the Democrats hate as well. That's what I'm trying to say. Amen? The devil hates God, the devil hates life, and the devil hates the church. Let me say that again. The Democrats hate God, they hate life, and they hate the church. And I'm going to show you that. We already know the devil hates God, the devil hates life, and the devil hates the church. Let me show you how the Democrats hate God. The Democrats as a party really hate God. And we know to be a Christian, you must love God. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. It was not too long ago, 2016, in the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, that the attempt to add the words God given to a resolution was met with a chorus of boos from the delegates. They were the party known as the party who booed God because of that. A little, little, little later, t- June, t- June 5th, 2019, the Daily Wire reported, the Democrats have continued their mission to root God out of the public square in the name of secularism by removing so help me God from the U.S. House of Representative Oath's witness, which must be taken to testify before the con- 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 congressional committees. They took out so help me God. Under God was omitted from some of the Democratic Council meetings of the DNC, not all of the DNC, because they want to have a facade of worshiping God, but privately and not so privately, they are rooting out the name God out of everything. They'd love to take the, they'd love to gut the Pledge of Allegiance. They'd love to gut uh, under God out of that. They'd love to, but they don't always say it just easily. Brody in a piece for CBS wrote that at the LGBT caucus meeting, Dr. Marissa Richmond, a DNC delegate who identifies as transgender and teaches women's studies at Middle Tennessee State University, led the Pledge of Allegiance, but paused silently, silently, but paused silent, silently in the place of the words under God. 
She was holding both the American flag and the gay pride flag, which dropped to the floor in the middle of the pledge. Democrat or Christian? Pick one. Amen? Amen. 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 You can't side with those who hate God Amen. and call yourself a Christian. Moses and Joshua both knew this, and there was a time in their congregation which the congregation was God's people that they actually drew a line and said, listen, those who want to serve other things than God, you stand over there, and those who want to be with God, you come stand over here and identify yourself. Either you're with God and God alone, or you're with God and whatever you want to call yourself, but you can't hitch both those together, and the people who did, stood against God stood against themselves because they perished in their sin. But they had a leader who put them on the spot. They had a leader who had a Bible for a backbone. Right? Amen. And I'm not getting on to you because you will hear instruction, but I'm using my small little platform to reach out beyond this church and tell people, listen, because you don't have a preacher with a backbone of a Bible, I'll be that person for you and tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Because we got too many lily-livered, tight-wearing jean spokesmen who call themselves preachers who don't tell you the truth. And someone has to get up and say something. And praise God, there are many churches who are today who are standing up saying, listen, it's about time the church talked about politics and about everything that has to do with mankind on this earth because we're the only one that has the truth in the Word of God perfectly. Amen. Amen. The Democrats hate God. The devil hates God. The Democrats hate life. 60 million abortions. That's a fact. 60 million abortions. We're getting ready to do the 40 days for life. And two weeks ago, the U.S. death toll for 2020 COVID-19, which these numbers are largely inflated as they are admitting they're largely inflated, was 175,363 deaths due to COVID-19, which they say are largely inflated because they put all kinds of people who weren't dying of COVID and they put them in that category. Well, I'll tell you something that's not inflated. Abortion, 554,701 U.S. deaths in 2020. That's not inflated. And it's not abortion, it's murder. Amen. Amen. The Holy Bible in Proverbs 8, 36, But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Why is the, why is the Democratic Party so against babies being born? It is because they are the right arm of the devil. And the devil says the baby's got to die. Wasn't it Pharaoh who killed all the babies? Wasn't it Herod who killed all the babies? Who do you think was behind that? It was the devil. It wasn't God. God loves children. That's why we sing about bringing little children to Jesus. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Listen, we are in a war against evil, and part of that is how you vote. And listen, like that old song says that I love, we are, we are in a battle not a Rick racing game. It's a fight and not a game. Run if you want to. Run if you will. I came here to stay. Amen? Amen. Man, when everybody else is running, we need to be like the Stonewall Jackson standing there saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to tell you the truth. Praise God we got some preachers who are willing to go to jail for the truth. Praise God we have some preachers and some, some churches who are willing to get fined for the truth. The Democrat Party is the party of death. Planned Parenthood, Baby Murder Incorporated. Planned Parenthood affiliates performed 345,672 abortions from October 1st to 2017 to September 30th, 2018. Planned Parenthood, which is Planned Baby Death Camp, proudly endorses Joe Biden for president. Let me say that again, just in case those of you who call yourself a Democrat and a Christian did not hear this. Planned Parenthood proudly endorses Joe Biden for president. If I didn't say anything else in this message to make you understand, you have to be a Democrat or a Christian, but you cannot be both. That should be enough because Amen. the baby murdering Planned Parenthood who makes their money off killing babies said that they endorse Joe Biden for president. I'm not telling you who to vote for right now. I'm telling you who not to vote for right now. Amen. Amen. Don't vote for Joe Biden because he is for killing babies. If you kill babies, I don't like you. I'll pray for you, but I don't like you. 
If you kill babies, I'm against you. Amen. I'll pray for you, but I'm against you. If you kill babies, you are my enemy. I'll pray for you, but you're my enemy because you're God's enemy. And God likes a flower garden, and he understands you've got to pull some weeds. Amen? Amen? The Democratic Party is a big weed that needs to be pulled out of this country. Amen? Amen. But too many people have been too silent for too long. It's ironic how the goody-two-shoe Christians who proudly voted for Bush are too sanctimonious and pious to vote for Trump. I find that very funny. That when it came to the pro-life issue, it wasn't Bush's Supreme Court nominee who folded. It was Bush's. Right? It wasn't Trump who, 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 who put somebody in the Supreme Court who was a Judas. It was Bush. And if you look down, who was a globalist? It isn't our president who's a globalist. It was Bush who was a globalist and is a globalist. Amen. You may like him. I don't care. I'm not telling you who not to vote for right now. I'm telling you who to vote for. President Donald J. Trump on Thursday released a letter addressed to the pro-life leaders and activists indicating his intentions to ad advance legislative and administrative priorities against abortion if he is elected to a second term. Here, amen. Yeah, I'm not telling you who not to vote for now. I already told you don't vote for Joe Biden. Right now I'm telling you who to vote for. That's Donald Trump. Okay, this church is not political. This church is based on truth. So all we're going to do is give you the truth, and you can choose who you want to vote for. Either death in Joe Biden or life in President Trump. Okay? It's not a political speech. But here's what, here's what our president said. As I seek re-election this November, I need your help in contrasting my bold pro-life leadership with Joe Biden's abortion extremism. Am I doing okay? I'm trying to do that right now. He said the Democratic Party unequivocally supports abortion on demand up until the moment of birth and even emphasized leaving babies to die after failed abortion. Joe Biden's embrace of this extreme position is most evidenced by his support for taxpayer-funded funding of abortion on demand. Forcing taxpayers to pay for abortion is an abhorrent position that must be defeated at the ballot box, the president said. In his September 3rd letter, Trump wrote that if he wins... We have another four years to fight in the trenches for the unborn. You know, President Trump's saying, listen, listen, it's very simple. I mean, you may not like me as a person. You may find me reprehensible as a person. But listen, if you really want to boil it all down, I'm the candidate that stands for life. I'm the most pro-life president in history. And you've got me who stands for life. And you've got the other guy and the other girl who stands for death. Right. They want to kill babies all the way up until birth. And even past that. The president said he would work to appoint judges who will respect the Constitution and not legislate an abortion agenda from the bench. Pass into law three pieces of legislation that would restrict, restrict or defund abortion and fully defund the big abortion industry such as Planned Parenthood of our tax dollars. He says, listen, I've been trying for four years to defund Planned Parenthood and I can't get any help from people who say they're my friends, but give me four more years and I'll keep trying. And I'll appoint Supreme Court judges who will hopefully, Lord willing, overturn Roe versus Wade and give us life back in our country. Amen. Amen. Man, you got to like that. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. Amen. Kamala Harris, who is running for president as the vice president. Joe, Joe Biden's just a Trojan horse to get a more liberal, radical person called Kamala Harris in there. Now, I understand she says she's running as vice president. Kamala Harris is running for vice president, was a co-sponsor of, of the 2019 WHPA, which prohibits state laws banning post-visibility abortions. Do you understand what that means? She co-sponsored this 2019 WHPA, which prohibits state laws from banning post-visibility abortions. In other words, the baby's partially out and they're still not going to allow a state to say, that's illegal, you can't kill that baby. That's scary. Amen. But at least Kamala Harris is, is actually truthful. She says, there's no difference if it's out or in, we want to kill it. Amen? Amen? And we understand whether it's out of the body or in the body, that child has its own body, it's its own person, and it's created in the image of God, and it's a life either out or in, and we don't support any abortion for any reason. Amen? Because we support life. We love God with all of our heart, 
We love our neighbor as ourself. And if I was the baby being aborted, I'd say, please don't kill me. Amen? Amen. 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 Life or death. Democrat or Christian, pick one. The Bible says, all they that hate me love death. The Democrats hate, hate God and they love death. The Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Let me tell you something this morning. The Bible says all murderers will go to hell. Hell is a scary place. Hell is a place of outer darkness. Hell is a place where you won't have a party. Hell is a place where there are no friends. Hell is a place of torment for eternity. And the Bible says that all murderers will have their place in the lake which burneth forever and ever and ever. And if you vote for Joe Biden or any Democrat or any Republican who supports abortion, you are a murderer. Listen, if you see something happen, you do nothing to stop it. You are participating in that. And when you say it's okay to vote for someone who supports abortion, you are consenting to the death of that baby. And you're just as guilty as the one who made the law or the abortion doctor who actually kills the baby. I know. It's a heavy sermon. But we have one person called Trump who is a warning to our nation to repent or judgment who says, I will do my best to fully defund the big abortion industry such as Planned Parenthood of our tax dollars. And let me tell you something, he's not a politician who says something and doesn't try to do it. We've watched for four years when he says he wants to do something, he does his best to do it. Amen. And the people who are hindering him are the people who are Judases who say they're on his side and they stab him in the back over and over and over and over. Amen. Which is pathetic. Amen. And they're worse than the Democrats. The devil and the Democrats hate God, they hate life, and they hate the church. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. During the Democrat debates, Don Lemon asked O'Rourke the point-blank question, do you think religious institutions like colleges, churches, charities, should they lose their tax-exempt status if they oppress, if they oppose same-sex marriage? Yes, the Democrat presidential candidate replied to cheers from the intolerant crowd. In, in California, Santa Clara County, which has a Democrat governor and a Democrat mayor, North Valley Baptist Church has been fined $52,750 in nine days for going to church. Did you hear what I said there? They've been fined $52,750 in nine days for going to church in a country that says one nation under God on our money and in our pledge. They are being fined money for going to church and singing about God and praising God. Why? Because the Democrats hate God, they hate life, and they hate the church, and they're coming after you next. Amen. Amen? What they're doing in California and other places is just a preview of what they want to do if they take over the whole country. you got a guy like Joe Biden and a, and a woman like Kamala Harris in government with all the other corruption in government. You're just asking for trouble. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you Donald Trump is the answer Jesus Christ is the answer, and God can either give us a good leader or he can give us a bad leader based on what we deserve. But praise God, he's merciful. If it wasn't for his mercy, we wouldn't have had a chance. I vote for mercy. I vote for four more years of a possible revival. Because the Bible says, Be ye not therefore, be ye therefore, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Let me get it right. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Democrat or Christian, you choose. Pick one. You say, stop talking about politics. You know who wants to be, you know who wants me to be quiet about politics? Amen. You know who wants me to shut up about politics? People tell me all the time, Nathan, you're too political. What does that mean? That's the question I have. What does that mean? 
Does that mean I can't speak about the issues of our day? Because Jeremiah sure did. Amen? Isaiah sure did. Jesus spoke about the time, and they go, well, Jesus wasn't political. Jesus was crucified because he said he was the king. Amen. And he was the king. Amen. And he is the king, and he's coming back to be king, and he's going to rule with the rod of iron, and that's going to be a government, just so you know. That's going to be very political when he comes back next time. And says, hey, I'm here to rule, and I'm not taking a no. Amen. You say, well, what about Donald Trump? He's a no good guy. You say, what about Donald Trump? He's vulgar. What about Donald Trump? He, he, he says words he shouldn't say. He's done things in his past he shouldn't have done. Well, I say this one thing. You can judge a man more by his enemies than by his friends. Amen? Man, when I look at a man or a woman, I look at their friends, and I judge them a little bit on their friends, but I judge them a lot more by who their enemies are. Winston Churchill says, you have enemies, good. At least you stood for something once in your life. Right. Amen? Yeah. Is Trump perfect? No. Is he the man for the job? I believe so. By faith, Hebrews 11, the chapter of faith, by faith the harlot, Aber, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished, not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lion, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned, the flight of flight, the, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. You know when Trump was running against Hillary, people asked me, how can you possibly support Trump? How could you possibly, have you heard all the bad things that he said in his past? Have you heard all the bad things he's done in his past? All the things he's done, I said, listen here, I, I'm not a very smart person. I'm really not. But I do have a lot of common sense based on the Bible. And I do believe the Bible. And I do understand some things out of the Bible. And what I see is very simple. You've got Samson or you've got Delilah. Which one do you want? Amen. Now, Samson was not the guy. If I was in Israel, I wouldn't have voted for Samson to be my judge. I would have not voted for him. I would have said, man, he's a, he's a womanizer. Uh, he's vulgar at times. Uh, he, he's, got, you know, he's a long-haired hippie. I just don't think that that's God's guy. But I sure wouldn't have voted for Jezebel. And after Samson started to judge, I'd be like, well, I'm not going to base him on what he's done in the past. I'm going to base him on what he's doing right now. And right now he's killing Philistines. Amen? I don't like God's people. And when God's man starts to judge the enemies of God, I'm going to be for that guy. Amen? Amen. Well, you say, well, Hillary's not running this time. No, you got Joe Biden, who is a representative of Herod or Pharaoh, who killed the babies. So you want to vote for Herod or Pharaoh, or do you want Donald Trump, who is a really representative of Samson? You say, well, I don't see it. Donald Trump's not a good guy. Well, let me remind you, Rahab was a harlot. Gideon made an idol. Samson was vulgar. Jephthah made a bad oath. David was an adulterer. Samuel had wicked sons. But you know who hated them? The wicked city of Jericho hated Rahab. Amen? The enemies of God hated Gideon. The Philistines hated Samson. The atheists hated David. David said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Man, David, you look at David's life. Would you have voted for David to be president? With all the, with all the media saying, Look at what he did. Look at what he did in his past. Look how evil this David is. David said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And David, though he didn't look like it outwardly, was a man after God's own heart. Rahab used to be a harlot. David used to be an adulterer. Amen? Amen. I don't know what you used to be, but I wasn't perfect. So when I look at somebody who's not perfect, I say, wow, but the grace of God has touched his life that he's doing right right now. Amen. He's standing up for the unborn right now. Amen. Amen? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. David said that. You know who hates our president? The abortion doctors. The abortion doctors hate our president. Amen. Baby murderers hate our president. Criminals who are burning down our cities hate our president. Amen. Amen. 
The New World Order hates our president. Witches hate our president. I, I saw the last election they were casting spells against our president. I said, that's my guy right there. I'm praying for him, and my prayers are more powerful than their stupid spells. Amen. Marxists hate our president. Socialists hate our president. Agnostics hate our president. Atheists hate our president. Think about that. Let your mind sink into that a little bit. 69% of atheists are Democrat. Why is that? Because they recognize, they recognize the party that meets what they want, which is a godless society. 69%, and you go, well, that's, that means the other so many percent are Republican. No, 15% consider themselves Republican, 17% refuse to identify. 69% of atheists are Democrat. Why do most atheists love the Democratic Party? Because they are a godless society and a godless party, and they promote godlessness. That's why 93% of Democrat atheists support killing babies. And 98% of them support homosexuality because they are against God. Man, they say there is no God, yet they're against God. It's amazing how someone who says there is no God fights against God. Isn't that amazing? They don't fight against the tooth fairy. They don't fight against Santa Claus, who are all fictional. They fight against God because God is real and God opposes their style of life. Amen. God says you're a sinner. God says you're a sinner. God says you're a sinner. And in pride, they say there is no God. You know what I do? I fall to my knees and say, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And God says, I'll make you my son. I'll make you a saint. I'll make you my daughter. I'll make you a princess in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? God gives grace to the humble. He rejects the pride. The atheists are the most prideful people on earth. They reject God, and God rejects them. And they'll not be in hell because God re refused to love them. They'll be in hell because they refused to love God. Amen. So you can vote with the abortion doctors who are baby murderers. You can vote with the criminals. You can vote with the New World Order. You can vote with the socialists, the Marxists, the agnostics, and the atheists. But don't call yourself a Christian for one moment. Democrat or Christian, you need to pick one. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. I hope that you'll choose life this morning. This message is not against you if you call yourself a Democrat and a Christian. This message is simply meant to expose you that you cannot be both and that you need to deny the world and the party and the mindset of globalism, uh, the party that hates life, the party that hates God, and the party that hates the church, and say, I'm going to separate from that and I'm going to come over and stand with God plus nothing minus nothing. And I'm going to do whatever he wants me to do for the rest of my life. And I submit to him because he's my Lord, he's my God, and he's my Savior. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's what's wonderful. We have the church. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Other churches can do what they want. They can stay out of politics. They can stay out of the worldly affairs that are going on. They cannot talk about all the sins of the world, and they can continue to cash the checks that their members write. We're not going to do that because we're not funded by the government. We're not funded by people. We are funded by the Holy Spirit of God. And guess what? If they want to find our church, they can find us as much as we want. We don't need this building to preach. We don't need this building to teach. We don't need this building to sing songs to God. It's wonderful. It's comfortable. But God says the gates of hell shall not prevail the church. And unfortunately, the gates of hell have marched up to the church doors. Amen. That's the problem. Amen. That's why God is exposing us. That's why God is trying us. He's saying, what are you going to do when you don't have a building? Well, I want to tell you something. The church we heard this morning, I guarantee they don't have a building. They'll still be praising God. They'll still be preaching the gospel. And they'll be out on fire for God. Because persecution always stokes the fire of revival. Amen? So we should be, you know, I'm not happy when persecution comes. But praise God, it does. It does purify the precious metal. Amen? And if you're a child of God, when persecution, when tribulation comes, when hard times come in your life, you can say, wow, God cares about me enough to purify me. What a wonderful thing that is.
Democrat or Christian, pick one. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for a church that is able to hear the truth, that wants to hear the truth, and hungers for righteousness. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with us to be a voice in these dark times. Help us, Lord, not to be a voice for ourselves, for our own glory, but help us, Lord, to be a voice for the glory of God, that we'd promote the name of Jesus above all names, that we would tell people that there's only one way to heaven. doesn't matter what the world says. There's only one way. That is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to be a church that's a New Testament church, that we would love one another, that we would love our enemies. Father, we don't, we're, not against, uh, the, we're not against those uh, who, are, who are doing evil. Uh, we, we are against them as far as they're your enemies, but we pray for them, that they would be saved, that they could be a part of your family. And Lord, we do pray for this sincerely. We pray for all of our government leaders, Father, that they would be saved. And Lord, if they would not be saved, that they would be replaced with people who do love you. And Father, we pray this sincerely in Jesus' name. We ask if there's anybody here today that does not know you, that they would come and give their life to you and that they would pick either whatever the world has or you. Father, help them not to pick the world, but help them to pick you. In Jesus' name, bless the invitation. Amen.